Hey, hey, and welcome back to another learning Java 2D game programming video. Why is that so long? Oh well, in the last video, we made some more optimizations. The major thing that we did was to make sure that the images that we load from disk are in the most compatible format for your system. The other things we did were decrease the number of rendering buffers to two and fix a bug where our game objects would flicker in and out of existence down here. In today's video, we'll be implementing something called an effect, which will be attached to our moving entities, and it will be able to affect them in many different ways. And we'll make an example so you can see what I mean. So let's get started. Inside of the entity package, make a new package called effect. And inside of that package, you guessed it, a class named effect. And we want it to be abstract. So the first thing that will apply to all effects is a lifespan. So let's make a private int lifespan. And I'm going to have my lifespan in number of updates, so not in seconds. So let's just make that clear lifespan in updates. Let's alt insert, make a constructor. It will take in the lifespan. Let's make a update method. It will take in a state and a moving entity. And for now, let's decrease, decrement our lifespan in updates. And let's also make a method that will answer if we should delete this effect, if it has lived its life. <laughs> um, and of course, we can answer that by checking if lifespan in updates is less or equal to zero. So this will do for this class right now. Let's make an example effect that will extend this. I'm going to call mine caffeinated because, I don't know, long word. All right, so let's just make this extend effect and alt enter and create a constructor matching super. So I'm not going to take this in. For this example, I'm just going to say game loop up this per second and let's say that this always lasts for five seconds. So what I want my caffeinated effect to do is I want it to increase the speed of the entity that it's attached to. So first, let's make a private double speed multiplier. And it's a double because I want to be able to use um, decimals. So let's set this. I'm going to set mine to 2.5. Now we need to override the update method and it take in a state, state and a moving entity, entity. The first thing we need to do is remember to call the super update with our state and entity, otherwise it won't do the whole lifespan thing. So what do we want this update to do? We want it to multiply speed on our entity by the speed multiplier. So let's generate this method, create method inside of moving entity. And let's just call this multiplier because we already said what we're doing here. So this is what we're multiplying it with. And let's call our motion and say also multiply and multiply that by the multiplier. <laughs> so let's create this method inside of our motion. And now we're all the way down to our movement vector. So let's multiply it by the multiplier. All right, having gone all the way down there, I think this is also done for now. Let's go back to our moving entity and we need to store the effects. So let's make a list of effect, effects. There we go. And this is sad because it thinks that this list is from the list from the AWT package, but we want the regular utils list. So let's just change field effects type to list effect, and it will import this for us, and everything will be fine. 
So let's make this a new array list. Okay. So now we need to update each effect in this list during our update stage. So let's just move these around a little bit. We want to apply the position last. So first we do some updates. Here we're doing our updates and then we're doing some calculations based on these updates and then we're applying everything we've learned. Um, so here let's just get the effects and say for each effect effect update and pass in the state and pass in this which is a moving entity. All right so we of course wanted to live between updating our motion which is setting which direction we're moving at then we want to add the effect and then we want to apply the motion so after this we just need something that uses our new effect so let's go effects add new caffeinated to our player and let's launch it and see if it works or if we missed something and we didn't he is moving super fast whoosh, whoosh, which is awesome so we, we haven't really looked at the should delete yet so this effect will of course last forever and ever so let's fix that now going back to the moving entity let's make a cleanup method and we might want to refactor the cleanup method to the game object eventually but I don't know yet so we're not using a game object that isn't a moving entity so if we need to make that refactor we will but for now just keep it in the moving entity so what we want to do now is we want to loop through our effects we want to find the effects that we should delete and we should delete them from our list but there's of course a problem with looping over a list and deleting things inside it at the same time. So either you use a, an iterator for that, or since our effects list is gonna be very small, I'm actually, for simplicity, just gonna make a copy of it. So list copy of effects. Now we can loop over this list and delete from the other list. And I'm gonna use the stream API because I like it. So first of all, just filter out the ones we want and we can use this. And if you haven't seen this before, this is a method reference. So we are basically saying that we know that in this list or in this stream, um, all of the objects will be of type effect. And we know that an effect has this method. So we're basically just telling this that when you come here, you know that it's an effect, so call the should delete on your effect. And this works either if this has no takes no arguments, or if it takes one argument, which is what object is coming from the stream. <laughs> so you'll see in the next thing we're doing, which is for each. So we know that uh, this stream has effect. So for each effect, we can use a method reference for our effects. Let's say remove. And you can do this because the remove method on the list, it takes one argument and we know that we come here with an effect. So this just makes it a little cleaner, a little easier to read. All right, let's try that and see if it worked. So after five seconds, we should return to normal speed because it should have deleted the effect. And it did, look at that. All right, you could use this to make lots of fun stuff. Let's just take the speed multiplier and say minus one. So now you won't see anything, but if you try this, what'll happen is it'll invert all of your keys. And this is just one example of the things that we can do. Also, the <laughs> life ended, so now it went back to normal. You can do a lot of fun things, and not only with speed multiplier. Since you have access to both the entity and also the state, there's just... you can do whatever you want. So, we're not going to use the caffeinated effect. It was just a, an example. But um, thank you for watching, and... 
I will see you soon. Hej då!